Hey guys, Ben and Alonzo here discussing episode six, I believe, of the Knicks, Start Calling Me Dad, which was super creepy and unfortunate there at the end. <sighs> so uh, first of all, let's take a quick look at the trailer that Cinemax ran for the show. Scrub in, Birdie the Wise, for I have many new secrets to reveal to you. I don't waste a lot of time on those. Successful <laughs> C-section this week. Yeah, yeah, so finally we got the, 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 the episode, as always, filled with uh, terrible news and some good news. Yes. Um, and the successful C-section was great. Baby lives, mother lives, they mm. got it. He invented, he used the balloon. It was great. I, I, I mentioned, uh, the, I saw Ghostbusters last week. The, they did the 30th anniversary yeah. reissue. I just mentioned the Doctor Who thing, but in the, when they get the call from Bellevue that they've got the placenta previa, I was just immediately responded, reminded of Annie Potts going, we got! Oh, right, right. Um, uh, so yeah, so they got that, and 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 you, meanwhile, down in the basement, Algernon has fixed the hernia thing. So those were the two big operations at the uh, beginning of the season that people were not living through. And at least we realizes that 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 Thackeray's uh, ambition, respect for science, belief in scientific medical progress, outweighs his racism a little. A teeny bit, a bit, because he was convinced. And he's clearly impressed with Algernon. It's almost like he's not traditionally racist, but has <laughs> zero interest in being involved in any solution. Like, I don't know why they decided that you guys were inferior, but they decided it, yeah. and I'm not interested in fixing it. Exactly. Right. I know. And for a man of science and somebody who has cut open enough bodies to know that, you know, under the skin right. we're pretty much all the same, yeah, he hasn't quite made that connect yet of... Although it's entirely possible he's never... Touched oh, a but black that's person. true. That's that's true. Yeah, but they say so. It yeah. must be true. You know, but it's yeah. a nice job. Uh, uh, An Algernon, uh, Doctor Edwards had a great line about you know that he's when, when Thackeray's talking about the man of science and and yet he just sent six people or eight people who badly need care away right. and just that I mean those people hunched over mm, with the wounds yeah, yeah, on yeah. the head. I mean it's just they all got run over by horses or some right. awful shit. You know. Right. But at least he got the people who were there to stay, right. and again, you sort of hope that at some point Thackeray changes this, so maybe you can't, maybe they're not gonna allow blacks into the nick proper, sure. but maybe this the adjunct can, kind of, can continue yeah, in yeah, some yeah, capacity. Yeah. Or a Barrow can figure out a way to make, you know, to pocket more money right. out of it. You how, know? Do you get, how do you get some cash out of it? But then we gotta get to how the episode, it opened with Cornelia and ended with Cornelia mm -hmm. in, in this great moment where she, she had a great smile on her face after she tackled Mary Mallon. Is that Mary Mallon? Yes. Yeah. Um, I just read, by the way, the real Mary Mallon, who was wasn't actually discovered until about seven years later. Ah. But that is the real source of the typhoid outbreak. Peach Melba. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she wasn't discovered until seven years later, and she spent much of the rest of her life in quarantine. The uh, whatever they did, keeping her in quarantine for the rest of her life was the wrong call. Um, <laughs> a lot of wrong calls medically right, made sure. at the turn of the century. So turn of the last century. Lord knows uh, what look, wrong calls were She, she wasn't bled to death with leeches, so let's give her that, you know. Small progress. <laughs> so, um, uh, but Cornelia tackles her, mm. and then there's that look as she walks off when the cops are putting the cuffs on her. Um, I'm, I'm surprised at how willing people are to come into contact with her, like mm. considering the level of paranoia that we have. But right, no, it's right. a cop, and it's a quick shot, but you see her, like, like that was invigorating. This is, <laughs> you know, and she's doing good, and, and she's actually, she has sort of she has helped she hasn't helped the inspe health inspector at all learn how to talk to the city's wealthy people but she's interpreted for him in a she's lot of interpreted ways. but she has become more like him like she is less she's now uh, whereas in the beginning of these conversations she was like how dare you speak to now she's like yeah like, we're here to talk to the what, staff what, what, <laughs> whatever, whatever, i don't care i don't care what your nonsense so she uh, but then of course the episode ends Mm. Well, once she gets back from that meeting, and instantly gets her fiance, <laughs> her dad, and her future father-in-law are—they're all—they're yeah. all—they're like, oh, what great stories that'll make when the ladies lunch. Exactly. Isn't that cute? You right. doing something that right. won't, we won't oh, be doing that anymore. Oh, you, know? you solved the typhoid epidemic <laughs> in the city. Literally, no one in the city <laughs> did anything more important than yeah. my daughter did How today. Adorable. Adorable. <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> Rascal. Uh, so, and then, and then of course, then, right. Uh, and then we get her father-in-law. Creepily putting the make on her. And then I, 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 the, they have a couple As of... As though that marriage was already, wasn't doomed enough already. Yeah, like, that's just the, that's the peach yeah, on the Melba. Again, please don't get married. The, um, 
And then we had that uh, uh, afterwards, uh, Cinemax includes conversations with a couple of the showrunners. Oh, I didn't see or that. Guy, you know, guys working with the showrunner. And, they, and Soderbergh, originally, they were going to let that scene go further, that he might actually have his way with her. Uh -huh. And Soderbergh wanted to scale that back. He thought the threat of it and the inference of it in a creepy way in which the, the, menace, bottom, yeah. the menace was, was uh, made the scene more effective. And I would say he's right. Yeah, I think Because it, it was very skeevy to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I love the, her scene with uh, Algernon where he's being all jokey with her about her, her relationship with the health inspector. And, like, and so, I mean, I feel like an idiot for thinking that there might be a romance there when yeah. you forget again. They're lifelong we, friends. They yeah. grew up in the same house. They're brother and sister. And so even the way they, like, kick each other, you know, they, like, they were just, like, yeah, messing yeah, yeah. with each other. Uh, but they have such a kind, informal relationship that seems incredibly rare in that time. Well, uh, you know, because uh, obviously it began out of just proximity and necessity, but now that they're out in the real world as intelligent, useful people who are not being taken seriously because of their gender or right. race, that's probably a, uh, something that as adults has brought them even closer together. It's like, yeah, tell me about your day, tell me about your day, you know, like right. in terms of not being taken seriously, even though they are smarter than most of the people around them, more capable than most of the people around them, but because they aren't white uh, and she doesn't have a penis, it's like no one cares. That's right, that's right. So that's a, uh, that's a nice relationship to follow. It's really, in a sense, even though Clive Owen is the star of the show, that, that relationship and what's happening with them is the most, that's the most interesting parts right. of the show. Meanwhile, with Clive Owen, we have the relation, the, the love triangle now with, with Bertie and, and the nurse where, he, Bertie's taking her out on a date, but obviously, you know, she's smitten. He's even smitten they're in all, a way. Right, they're all, they're all, into, they're all into John, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm surprised that she was, nonetheless, she seemed into that date. She liked Bertie, you know. Sure. But she is, she has her stirrings. She has stirrings for Thackeray. But, but how great was Bertie with the pretzel? Yeah. I don't even know why. I, I don't know. I like <laughs> <laughs> that was a really, there was some, that, and then, so we had that nice, and then Bertie's just exhilaration with solving it. Yes. And then Thackeray, who's so likable, and then, you know, and then he has those horrible moments with Dr. Edwards, but even those end up getting mitigated because. He won him he over with the hernia. Realize, yeah. He's like, oh, really, the hernia? Hmm, <laughs> that's good stuff. And he's not interested in stealing anything. Like, no. it's a, like he really, there's something pure about Thackeray because I, in, a, in a different kind of show, he would steal credit for the hernia. But here, it doesn't even cross his mind. And when Bertie comes up with the idea of using water instead of air, right. which will create more weight, he's like, Oh, that's brilliant! Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Doctor Asshole would have stolen it. Of course, most people in the world would steal yes. it. Most people. Now, the other invention that we get, and by far my favorite part of the show, was the giddiness of the X-ray. <laughs> and you're just like, oh my God, what are you people doing? I know. Lead shields. When Barrow stands up, then he gets his head x rayed. For an hour. <laughs> for an, for an, an hour. hour. An hour. Of uranium radiation. exposure. Beamed at his head. Oh. Uh, I can see into my soul. Yeah, you're going to um, see a tumor soon. Yeah, I, well, by the way, I, I'm sure we will. I'm sure in season two we're, 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 that Barrow will, will, and the nurses and all. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody. Jesus, what a disaster. Now, that is. poor Dr. Asshole, Mrs. Asshole, I feel bad for her because the baby died of the typhoid and Mrs. is not ready to deal with it, but you gotta love the sister. The nun is like, let's give her an orphan. Maybe that'll, you know, get her, give her something to channel her feelings yeah, toward. Yeah, I said, you know? uh, Lee and I, my wife, were watching the show. I thought, this is a terrible idea. Like, it's right, cons it's right uh, in a perfect world. Sure. But, but she's deranged right now. And, mm. I, and like, there are other families who aren't deranged <laughs> who will do a better job <laughs> raising this orphan. You but, have a point. But you're right. Uh, uh, the, the, it was a not, the sister. I mean, she's just as good as it gets. And more know. great scenes with her and Cleary. That, that, that relationship is also really fascinating. Yeah, good. Yeah, there's two really nice, nice, nice relationships emerging. It's a really great show. Yeah. Is Gallinger his name? Gallinger, thank you. I don't know I, why it came to me suddenly I even, after weeks. Watching the show, I was thinking, I must remember his name this week, because I can't keep calling him Dr. Gallinger, Asshole. Gallinger, Gallinger, Gallinger. 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 Um, um, yeah, no, no, no. This is, this is uh, populated with just one interesting character after another, and, and ones that we've only just barely started to get to know, you know. I think I think we're gonna get more of the health inspector at some point where we're gonna he's gonna not just be the cartoon like there, there's gonna be more going on there even I'm just just based on the rest of the show being so rich with all these people. I liked how when <laughs> Mary Mallon is in there 
they take their time to make their big reveal while people are eating the ice cream. I know. I'm like, speak before they yeah, put, put their, those spoons put down, spoons everybody. Down, but they let a couple people eat before they got around to dropping their big moment. And Bertie's dad, the hospital, calling in the middle of the night? Yeah, what, what, is this much, what is this crazy? What a dick. Who are these people? <laughs> but guys? also, I'm sure for 1900, like the idea of doctors being on call all night, probably, eh, man, you can wait till the morning, you know. I mean, look, my mom still ain't granted. My mom's not a young woman, but she's still, like, a late call is still stunning. She'll still click over to call waiting and say, honey, I've got to go with long distance. And I'm like, I'm calling long distance. Everyone's calling long distance. There's no charge. Exactly. There's no it's charge. The same now. There's no immediacy made by a long distance call. But that that hasn't penetrated yet. Uh, are we leaving anything uh, anything out? Um, no, except I just uh, every MD I'm related to is yelling at the screen for me not remembering the word for the person who has the disease but doesn't they can give it to others but doesn't have it themselves. And I'm, uh, used well, to, I'm, I'm sure used it'll to be in the comments, so me. whatever. Yeah, yeah I don't totally. know what either. So, uh, <laughs> all right, guys, uh, the Nick, if you haven't, uh, there's six episodes in. Uh, yeah, tell uh, your friends. This show you. is amazing. Yeah, it's a great show.